guys, welcome back to another video of Life. We got some problems today. <laughs> All right, so you guys can see, you guys know, Yes, this is a cooling pressure test kit, a cooling system, a radiator pressure testing kit, whatever you want to call this. Just a little story time here. Other night, uh, I was driving home, and as I was driving home, I noticed that uh, the charging light was going on and off. And I thought maybe, hey, an alternator, I wasn't too far from home, so I figured, hey, let me just try to limp it home. And then slowly after that, started hearing some squealing. Uh, and it started to smell a bit like coolant in the cabin. <laughs> at that point, I started looking at my coolant temp and the car was overheating. So I pulled over, popped the hood, the car was smoking like crazy. Smoking. I mean, like, <laughs> this thing was chiefing and, uh, started making some funny noises. So I just, you know, obviously towed it home and we're here today. So my inference here, uh, I didn't really diagnose it, but there was coolant all in the middle area here. I just started it and this fan is actually hitting the shroud now so my inference is that oh and my inference was actually right as you can see guys look at the pulley the water pump pulley it's actually crooked <laughs> all right so funny enough I was actually gonna change the water pump also because I did the thermostat when I did my the manual swap and that was a couple months back I had that initial thought anyways because I heard some like squealing smell cooling um, started overheating and I was on the highway doing maybe 70 miles an hour so it was either I was losing coolant at a really like fast rate or there was no water, uh, cooling circulation or water circulation in the car which caused uh, a really quick overheating situation i guess we're gonna get to pulling off everything and replacing the water pump i mean it doesn't look like too bad of a job i guess we'll get started actually as, as funny as it sounds the other night i thought it was a water pump so what i did was I actually went on fcp euro and i ordered their full kit water pump thermostat hoses uh o-rings and all that so that should be here maybe in like a day or so but for right now i'm just gonna take the car apart um uh, and just get it ready for the new water pump and everything so so really, initially, when you're working on a cooling system, the first thing you want to do is actually drain uh, whatever coolant is in the system. I don't think I have any coolant in here. Uh, I lost a lot of coolant that night, so what I'm going to do is just start taking apart the stick. So I'm just going to start removing pieces. Uh, take that off, and then we'll remove this uh, just so we can expose the fan shroud, because that's what we want to tackle the fan shroud and getting the fan off, because that's probably going to be a bit of a, a pain. All right, so I removed these push clips. Uh, they all go in one, two, three, four. And that takes this piece off also. And now we got the radiator uh, exposed. As you can see, like right there, it was even like coolant. Like this thing was, it was bad, man. We're gonna work on uh, just removing like everything we can. So like I said, the fan shroud, we're gonna get this pin out. So we got, to remove the shroud, you have to take this is this pin off there's one right there as you can see and there's another one right here you gotta remove those that's gonna take these side pieces off at least like one and two um and then this shroud i believe is held at the bottom with uh two torque screws um yeah so we're gonna get cracking on that what i use is just a little flathead not really supposed to, but I do it anyways. Uh, they tend to kind of sometimes break it if you force it a bit, but I had this off recently, so it's not too bad. Right there, you can see this middle of the clip comes out, and then you take that middle piece out. All right, so we're back here. I'm just going to start pulling this off right here. Just want to be careful that you don't drop that. Do, more than likely you're not gonna be able to find it so like once again check out the middle and then we go pry uh, this piece of right here go. this 
part of the shroud comes out. And then we're gonna tackle this one here. It's kinda in a tight spot. All right, so I got a light on it, but you guys probably still can't see it. Right there you guys can see. So I'm gonna work on getting that off in order to get this upper radiator hose off we have to pry this clip up like so it doesn't have to come all the way out just for people I've seen people that take these clips completely out um, you don't need it to come all the way out you just need it to come up halfway so it's not locking the hose anymore and then you just uh, pry it off I actually just replaced this hose but if you didn't replace this hose or even this, or even your radiator, you gotta be really careful because these tend to break. Um, like if you force them a little too much, use a pry bar or something like that, you gotta be really easy when taking them off or it will break this part of the radiator and or break, you know, the hose. You're probably gonna have to get another hose. I have a kit that comes with another hose, but, um, you know, I replaced this because I broke it, so. Just learn from my mistake. So something I forgot to mention, you gotta take your uh, air, uh, well, the intake off um, just to have space here so you can back this hose up and everything. So I just start by unplugging this. Oh, you really just have to take this section off. You don't have to take the oil bulb off. So you just start by unplugging the map sensor. Uh, there's a 10 millimeter right here. There's also a 10 millimeter under this cover right here that holds this ballast for this headlight down. But it also holds the airbox. So you wanna take that off, the temp, these two 10 millimeters off, unplug this, and then take, uh, loosen this clamp to allow this to come off. So I didn't get to record this. Uh, I needed two hands for this, but normally a lot of people have a hard time taking this off. So it's kinda of like this, and then the plugs go in like that. What I normally do is I, pull, I peel this back uh, just to expose the clips, you have to press in to pull up. Same thing with this, peel this back, pull that off, and then you just pry this up. Cover comes off, and there's the other 10. I used to take the air box off, so take a little bit of pack. There you go. So I took the other one off, and so that should be... So after some prying around and everything, uh, pulling this, I managed to pull this out. It's just like, I guess, stuck in there somehow. And all you gotta do is pull it, pick this up. Make sure the ballast is not in the way. I'm not gonna lie, after pulling this for maybe a minute or two, slowly back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, this hose is out, and now we can take that away and then pull this piece of the fan out off. And so, here we go. Here's our radiator hose. I'm actually replacing this. So, right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that off. All right, we're going to leave you a shorter six. All right, so. So I'm gonna put this on there like this. Oop. And there we go. Okay. And uh, just kind of twist this off. All right, so I got this hose off. No longer gonna be needed this anymore. But I'll keep it anyways, cause you never know. All those bald things happen, whatever. But you guys can see from here a better idea of what the water pump pulley you can see look at that it's not in line with this with this idler pulley not in line with the alternator uh, it's literally not in line with <laughs> anything it's crooked uh, so right now we're gonna get to pulling the shroud off but I believe from right here I can actually get to so you can see all the way down there with the light there's a, a Torx right there. So I can actually take that out and off from over here, from up here. Uh, I believe there's one on the other side, but... Uh, oh yeah, there's one up here. Right there. You can see, 
where the light is pointing. So this is a T25 I'm using. It's all the way out. At this point, you want to start like unplugging this. There you go. Uh, the plug for the radiator. You're really supposed to unplug this. I mean, the radiator fan. Oh wait. I believe that's for the, the aux fan on the phone, but I just usually just move it out, out of the way of the shroud. Just kind of get this out of there. Get this screw out all the way. Let's work on the one down here. So this is also a T25. I don't know if you guys can see that, but... Uh, just remember the orientation of these like this was a really long screw that one went up at the top uh i'm pretty sure you don't want to mix these up i don't know you might be able to puncture the radiator or something with that one the screw that's a little longer than needed oh uh, so i guess there's there's no thing on the other side so this, there's no torque screw on the bottom side um on the passenger bottom side so this thing is loose now so now we gotta work on the fan clutch. Basically, this tool is used to hold the bolts like this. And this is a reverse thread. So as you're holding with one hand, the other hand has this wrench here and this, uh, this nut there. And you want to turn this to the right as you're holding the pulley, the bolts for the pulley. And I turn this to the right, and it'll unlatch the fan. And then you just kind of want to spin this off all the way to the right. And then the fan will come out with the shroud in one piece. Like this all comes up in one piece. So, another dumb thing that I just did. While I was pulling this out, I just so happened to drop it, and I broke one of the fans off the fan blade. Oh, I guess it happens. Whatever. I'll order that too. But at this moment, we have the whole front exposed. Now, um, this pulley was kind of walking off this water pump. Uh, so I'm just going to buy a new pulley and replace it. I don't know the extent of damage on it, and I kind of don't want to take a chance. So I'm just going to replace that. So right now, what I normally do with these kind of things are right now, as we have tension on the belt, um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to loosen these a bit. I'm just going to crack them loose just so it's not extremely hard to get off. If those are 10 millimeters, I'm just going to go get the 10 millimeter right now and then we'll, we'll break them loose. So like I said, um, I just like a little extra security, so I just go with the hand wrench and cut these. So there you go, loose, loose, loose. At this point, we got a couple things to do. We have to remove the thermostat housing and the thermostat. I will be replacing that also, even though I already replaced it, but with the kit, it comes with another one. So I said, F it, why not, you know, I already have it off. We're gonna be removing this bottom hose. I believe that temp sensor comes with a new temp sensor O-ring and a bottom hose, so I'm gonna repla be replacing that. Um, and I'm also gonna be replacing this belt. Uh, it looks fairly new. I'm pretty sure it was all changed uh, by the previous owner before I got the car. But, um, I don't know. Uh, it's just one of those things I'm in there, so I'm just gonna change it. Uh, wasn't too expensive, I think it was like 13 bucks, so. I just said, why not? So I'm just going to take this thermostat housing off. There's these three 10 millimeters right here. You want to pull this off. Take this uh, wiring harness off this. And release the low radiator hose. Take the whole thermostat housing out. Then we'll have access to the water pump. And we'll take this belt off and, and start playing around with that. All right, so we got a little done. I took the under paneling off the bottom because it was cooling coming out of this hose. I just wanted to dump into there. Um, I took those three 10 millimeter bolts that were here. Here's the bracket. 
is the bolts right there. You have to unplug this throttle position sensor. Um, and I pulled the whole thermostat with the housing out. You can see in there, guys. Uh, a little bit of some light. You see that shaft? It's not straight at all. It's like coming out. So that's actually not a good thing. Um, so we got to take that one out. So now I'm going to work on getting. Uh, I got the little radiator all off. I got the thermostat. I got the thermostat housing off. And, and with that, that water pipe right here, I'm going to actually work on getting um, this pump out. So I'm going to work on getting this belt off. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it's this right here that you have to loosen. Uh, you know, obviously take the tension off it to get the belt off. So let me just check that out real quick. All right, so this is a eight millimeter Allen. You have to take the cover off of this and put the eight millimeter in there and actually turn towards the right. Uh, you wanna go to the right and then you'll see the tensioner starts to move. So that's how I got the belt off. Uh, okay, so unfortunately, to replace this belt, <laughs> we actually got to take off the AC belt, but we'll do that uh, later on. But right now, it's working on getting this pulley off. Look at this, guys. That's so bad. Hopefully everything's all right. All right, guys. So you guys can see the bearings fell out all in here. This water pump shot, shaft in there, shot. And this is why you want to always replace cooling system components on these BMWs. I can even see from here that there, it has that um, composite uh, material impeller. So it's not even a metal impeller. So. I don't even know if this has really been changed. It's probably been changed before. Uh, this car is over 200,000 miles, but maybe a long time ago. So I'm just going to work on getting this together. I'm going to take this pump out. We got a couple more bolts to get the water pump out. We got one, two, three, I believe four. And I don't see any other bolts. If I do see any other bolts, uh, they'll, they'll probably show themselves after, but yeah. All right, guys, so I would say maybe 30 minutes or so have passed. Uh, so a couple of things that I realized. So I did break the fan blade, so I just ordered one from FCP Euro. I also ordered a brand-new fan clutch. fan clutch looks old and rusty, so it's definitely going to have to get replaced. Um, I also got, like, bolts. Uh, you know, those things look kind of rusty, whatever. So I got new bolts, water pump pulley, and I also have a water pump kit on the way with both hoses, a new coolant temp sensor, O-rings, seals, whatever uh, I need to replace, and a new thermostat. So as far as the cooling system, everything should be done. So only thing I wouldn't, I wouldn't have replaced yet is the radiator. So there's bearings behind that water pump. They all came out. I guess that's where the coolant was squirting out of. This impeller was like all mangled and pieces broken off. Uh, just so happened that the majority of the pieces that broke off couldn't go through this hole here. So the majority of it came out. Uh, I drained all the coolant or majority of it out. Um, I did do a coolant flush before. Uh, but I'm sh I guess I'm going to go through it and do it again. And this is where we stand right now. Car taken apart and just waiting. Yes, sir. FCP always holding it down. So we got the parts for the E46. Um, crazy enough, <laughs> I went and actually picked up some parts yesterday from FCP. I went and picked up fan blade. I went and picked up a fan clutch. I went and picked up bolts for the water pump. I went and picked up a uh, water pump pulley, actually. Went and picked up a water pump pulley. I went and picked up the bolts for the fan clutch and the fan blade. So we're ready to commence putting this back together. Um, I got a new gasket for the water pump. Got a new uh, O-rings for these water pipes. Both of them that go into the water pump. I got a new seal for the 
thermostat. I got a new thermostat again. Uh, I got this new water pipe seal here. So we're ready to go. We got upper and lower radiator holes, brand new. New coolant temperature sensor for the lower radiator holes. And we're ready to we're ready to rock and roll. I was gonna say guys, MCP is always holding it down. Always. Here we go. We got the whole kit here. New holes clamps. Brand new hoses. Got a new serpentine belt. I mean, we, we got the whole nine yards. New O-ring with the coolant temperature sensor. Gallon of antifreeze. And we got our we got our water pump here, man. So just to show you guys how bad this uh, water pump that I had was. So we got we got a new water pump here. So here's the new water pump. As you guys can see, this shaft does not move in and out. It's metal impeller. So this is not gonna grenade itself and blow up. Has dowels for the uh, gasket. But look at my old one. My old one, you guys can see, look. Shaft moving in and out. You know, things all broken, plastic. Bearings all destroyed. Uh, it's, it's, it's basically toast. Start first by removing these uh, O-rings off these pipes here. The number one right here. And I have brand new ones. We're going to throw these on. When you put these on, what you want to do is you want to apply um, like maybe a grease or something like that. Um, maybe like a sil like silicone spray, something to them. Uh, not too much, but just a little, just to make it a little easy when you're putting the water pump back in. And you have to put these pipes back into the water pump so they seat all the way. Because uh, if these don't seat all the way, obviously, you start, you know, put all of this back together. Start the car, start putting coolant in. It's going to leak from uh, where these O-rings are supposed to be in the uh, water pump. Alright, so I put the new O-ring on. And I applied just a little bit of some silicone grease to that. Um... Just to make it a little easy, deal it. So I did actually buy a BMW water pump uh, gasket. So it's actually metal, and I believe this works a lot better than the one that's gonna come in the kit. Thing. So I went and got the OEM gasket. I suggest that you guys do the same, or get one that's metal, even if it's not OEM. So I'm gonna put this together. I'll show you how it's, it's uh, put together, and then we'll we'll put that back in. So I also forgot to mention, before we put this water pump in, um, you want to clean off the old surface, so like, just make sure that it's clean for you to put uh, the new gasket on and the new water pump. So you just want to make sure that this whole surface right here, just trying to zoom in, is clean uh, for you to put that on. So you want to just scrape it off, maybe some brake clean, wipe around. Just make sure that it's smooth and, and clean. All right. So there's the gasket on there. There's the two alignment dowels. And here's the metal gasket. Um, you can't really, I believe you can't really put this on the wrong way. It's only oriented one way. So if you have questions on how to put it on, basically if it lines up with all the holes and all the dowels, I'm pretty sure that you can just put it on this way and it, and it works. Um, so this is the way that it's supposed to be put on. Um, and we're just going to put this on. Start threading in some of the bolts. Make sure it's seating properly. Make sure the water pipe connections go in and seat all the way. And then we should be alright. Alright guys, so I got this water pump in place. So first thing I did was I pulled this water pipe just to make this installation easy. I pulled this water pipe right here out this way. Out towards the radiator. And then... I took the water pump and f put it on this hose first, so on this pipe first, and then I backed it in all the way towards uh, the block and then uh, onto this water pipe right here. Now the thing is, uh, one thing I cannot stress enough, I see this happen a lot, you want to hand thread these bolts first. You don't want to go in with a, with a wrench or the impact, nothing. You want to hand thread these first. Um, just so you don't strip anything, best thing to do is to make sure that they go in by hand first. And then, uh, like I did, I had one of these 
and I was just twisting, you know, got tight, there you go, tight, did the ball at the bottom, this ball here, you know, this ball here, and so, yeah, and now it's like in there, so now I'm going to go with the, with the uh, ratcheting wrench, and I'm going to, you know, crank down a little, and torque that down. Okay, so the camera died, but what you want to do is you want to torque this, um, you want to torque these bolts here, all five of these 10 millimeter bolts that go into this water pump, you want to torque them all down to, I believe it's seven foot pounds. Yeah. Oh yeah, so seven foot pounds. No more than seven foot pounds, they don't need a lot of torque. Uh, yeah, so you want to do that and then we can start assembling thermostat put the lower radiator hose new radiator hose in with the um with the new coolant temp sensor and start plugging everything up the water pump kit came with this o-ring right here so you want to make sure that that's in there seated and here we got a new thermostat and that also comes with um one of these o-rings but since we're already we already have one there it's just i guess extra all right so uh, with the old um no i'm not getting a new housing thermostat housing <coughs> this one's fine uh you know you should take this plug it in like so so it goes down like this and then we also have two o-rings for this pipe right here so this sits here the back of this thermostat housing there are two o-rings these are replaced the last time i did my thermostat but once again i'm gonna replace them again all right so generally you want to put like a hold up guys <laughs> we got a special guest mr m stole over let's get it over look at your boy <laughs> It was cracking. He came to help your boy over here. It's a little... Oh, yeah. my. Yeah, it's a little something, bro. We got problems. Everybody got problems. Yeah. So, this kit came with a new lower radiator hose. So, this is my old one that on after. So, I'm going to actually install this right now. Just because it's in a funny place. It sits, sits right here. And it has to come up towards the thermostat housing. So, I'm just going to put it in right now. Uh, so, let me get... So I usually apply like very little grease on the inside just to make it a little easier to uh, to put on to the radiator. Uh, it's sometimes it's a pain in the butt. Take this and then start fishing it down. Get these wires out the way. Okay. Here we go with the bottom. There we go. All right. So after you get it fully seated, you can't go anymore. You want to put the clip down and then pull it back a little just to check, make sure that it's not uh, going to leak or come apart. And then what we're going to do here, this goes under here like so. So what we're going to do here now, I'm going to put the water pump pulley back on. Um, I'm going to put this belt, 17 belt back on. I got a brand new one and I'll put the AC belt back on. And then we can commence finishing up putting in the cooling system. Here we got new bolts, all from FCP. If you guys want to get this, we'll link this down below in the description. But, uh, new pulley. So I'm just going to toss this on there. Uh, to line up these holes going to be a little bit of a pain. But... Alright, so... We just put this 17 belt on, uh, so it goes up over the water pump, under the idler pulley, around the alternator, around the power stand pump, and around the second half of the crank, back here, and then under the tensioner, like this, and you know, back around the water pump. So that's the routing for that, and then we have the AC belt right here, so this goes around the AC compressor, 
and then up over the tensioner and around the crank. So that's actually really easy to do. It's a very small ball, not a big ball. I'm gonna do that real quick. Start. Meep. It goes all the way. You'll hear it. Yeah, you'll hear it kind of. Click up a little. So you made a little progress. So after the last thing you saw, we put the hose on. We actually went and put the serpentine belt on. We put the AC belt on. Uh, water pump pulleys on. So here we got new. Like I said, I broke that other fan. Whatever. So we got new fan clutch, and we got new. Fan blades. Oops. And we got three new bolts, brand new bolts. Um, these are also from FCP Euro. The other ones were a little crummy, so you know me. If I ever have to go in here again, I don't want to have a hard time taking this off. for a couple days with the water pump thermostat and everything in and I bled the system but I didn't record it because it was kind of cold so right now I'm going to show you exactly how I went about bleeding it so obviously the front end was in the air I lost a lot of coolant so a lot of air was in the system so the front end was higher in the air so if you can you have to jack up the car right here on the E46 is the bleed screws right here um, so what I did was I took this off completely open I had a gallon of coolant And I was just pouring it into the overflow. Or not the overflow, but the expansion tank. And I went on to start the car. Before you do start the car, what you want to do is make sure that the heat is all the way up. So the heat is all the way on high, 91 degrees or whatever this car goes up to. <clears throat> and the fan speed is all the way up. So you can also bleed through the heater core. Last thoughts about this, this basically this job. It's not really that bad. If you have a couple common hand tools, you can do it. Uh, I do recommend getting the tool for the fan clutch here. That makes that a lot easier to remove. And everything else is really not that bad, unless it's probably been stuck on there for years. So uh, other than that, that's it. And you know, that's just another DIY in the book. So bad life out.